Hello dear viewers, in this video I'm going to be talking about George Soros, his comments on PM Modi and I'm going to be explaining that they are not only, he is not only targeting the Prime Minister but also is targeting India as a whole. I can uh, give uh, evidences for why I believe this and the whole, and I, through this video I want to explain to people who those even Indians who may not like Narendra Modi may have voted for somebody else to not support what George Soros is doing. Let's begin. The remarks given by uh, George Soros on Narendra Modi were given at his uh, delivery, at his uh, speech at the Munich Security Conference. In February uh, here he says that uh, he talks so what do he say exactly that he talks about India he says in he's talking about in the speech about countries which are not democratic which are totalitarian and here he talks about India he says India is an interesting case it's a democracy, but its leader, Narendra Modi, is no Democrat. Inciting violence against Muslims was an important factor in his meteoric rise. Modi maintains close relations with both open and closed societies. India is a member of the Quad, which also includes Australia, the US, and Japan, but it buys a lot of Russian oil at a steep discount and makes a lot of money on it. Erdogan's Turkey is perhaps even more interesting. He has actively engaged with both sides of the Ukrainian war and established himself as a neutral intermediary between them. So here he compares Erdogan to Modi and he says that uh, he goes on to talk about the uh, issue between Narendra Modi and Gautam Adani. I have spoken about this in the previous video. You'll see a link to that on the screen he says that they are close allies this is not true they have the government has given certain infrastructure contracts to Adani X company but they are not close allies in that sense it's not like they're doing anything illegal to support Adani nothing has been proven in that matter so you can't call them allies because Adani also works with other parties and other uh, governments. He says their fate is intertwined. Adani Enterprises tried to raise funds in the stock market but he failed. This is not true. Uh, you'll see that in the video it referenced. Adani is accused of stock manipulation and his stock collapsed like a house of cards. Modi is silent on the subject, but he will have to answer questions from foreign investors and in parliament. This will significantly weaken Modi's stranglehold in India's federal government and open the door to push for much needed institutional reforms. It may I may be naive, but I respect a democratic revival in India. So what does this statement mean? It's not just the criticism of Modi, but also of India. By um, he's talking, criticizing India's uh, decision to call Russia to buy Russian oil. He is not just targeting Modi, but is actually targeting the Indian economy because India's economy is dependent on imported oil, and if it were to sanction Russian oil, it would its economy would suffer and so George Soros is actually wanting India to harm its own economy just because he wants to remove Vladimir Putin from power. That's, I know that allegedly it's a support to Ukraine but actually the Ukraine conflict is a proxy war by the Western military industrial complex and globalists at large to cause regime change in Russia. So, yeah. That's the problem with uh, Soros criticizing India's purchase of Russian oil. And when he says that 
um, criticizes Adani. He then called, wanting for his company to fail. He is actually wanting one of India's largest corporations to go bankrupt, which would devastate the Indian economy. And so that is another attack on India by him. And when he says he wants a democratic revival in India, he's actually saying that the opposition parties will, if they win, then there will be a dem democratic revival. If they do not, then there will not be a democratic revival. He's actually saying that uh, the current government is not democratic, that only his supported parties should win, and only then can India be a democracy. That is not at all democratic. That is actually authoritarian. And it's an attack on Indian democracy as well. So, I want to show you what this piece by organizer says. Um, it talks about the Arab Spring in West Asia that rattled nation after nation there and also about conspiracies in India to trigger nationwide riots and violence both in 2020 and 2021. It's, uh, this uh, article says that there are powerful syndicates who will support any cause without even get, getting into details of it, so long as those protests are aimed at incumbent government of states, especially powerful and emerging states like India. Ironically, the farm protests are mainly being staged by rich farmers and powerful commission agents who for decades controlled agriculture in India like a feudal system. So here it says uh, this part of the article I disagree with. The, just because I also disagreed with the farm protests, but simply them because they are wrong about what they're protesting doesn't make them anti-national, which is kind of what this sentence implies. What is anti-national is the fact that they rioted against the government on 26th, uh, January 2021. And uh, but he talks about how, but in, so yeah, um, but yes, the fact that the Western media and the Indian media, not all anyway, but parts of the Indian media, supported the protests and were spreading fake news about the farm laws, uh, shows that uh, the globalists were spreading false information. And I think they knew, they knew that these laws were good for India so them lying is wrong, but people protesting because they were misled by lies isn't wrong. It's only when you riot and you block roads, which is what the protesters did, then does it become immoral and illegal. And they talk about the Black Lives Matter riot in 2020, uh, which was done to uh, attack the Trump administration. Yeah, the similar things are going to be done in India. Um, hopefully, it doesn't progress to the extent that the riots that happened in the US. And so let's see what George Soros has done in other countries. In his own country, a uh, secretive Soros funded group have groups have worked behind the scenes with Biden admin on policy, which is something documents have shown. Uh, that a secretive group backed by millions of dollars from liberal billionaire George Soros has been working behind the scenes with President Biden's administration to shape policy. This is not morally correct in my opinion because if you were work doing something honest and that would help the country you would be open you wouldn't be working behind the scenes but the fact that they are shows 
that they have a guilty conscience. Governing for Impact, the Vail Group boasts in internal memos of implementing more than 20 of its regulatory agenda items as it works to reverse Trump-era deregulations by zeroing in on education, environmental, healthcare, housing, and labor issues. This is not good. You shouldn't be controlling the government like this. Once a government is elected, it should be allowed to do its work. Manipulating it behind the scenes is not correct. And the fact that where this money comes from and where it's going is not clearly revealed to the public makes me doubt whether this is all legal that I fear that uh, some of the money might be dark money. So uh, what's the conclusion to this? And the conclusion is that Soros is dangerous to India. He is not just anti Modi. Now, he has, as a human being, he has every right to criticize the Prime Minister and he has every right to criticize India. What he does not have the right is to interfere in India's internal affairs. And mind you, he has done this to all countries. He has interfered in internal affairs of Brazil. He has done this in China and he criticized, I uh, showed you in that article he, about his speech. He's, uh, act, he's active in Turkey. His own uh, motherland, Hungary, have banned him from there because his NGOs have tried to foment social unrest there. So this shows that he is, has a God complex. He believes that he has the right to decide how others should live and if other countries want to follow different policies, want to have a different way of life, he will not allow that and he will manipulate, lie and even use, promote violence to get his uh, policies and ideologies implemented. He did this in Ukraine. Uh, if you want to see more about that, I suggest you watch the documentary by Oliver Stone called Ukraine on Fire. So, yeah, there's a lot of, about him that is what that a lot of things he's done that are illegal and criminal. But unfortunately, his money and influence have prevented him from being held to account. Hopefully one day he will be. I think if Trump can come to power again, he will be able to target and bring Soros along with his empire down. But until then, I would request all Indians to not support foreigners who interfere in our domestic affairs. We should criticize uh, our government within ourselves. We should work with each other, cooperate with each other, and should not uh, allow foreigners to dictate to us on who we elect and how our government should be run. Please give your feedback for this video in the comment section. If you want to see other videos about Indian nationalism, click here. If you want to see my previous video, click here. If you want to see the sources I use for this video, click the links in the description below. Thank you for watching. Vande Mother.